Oh no guys, what have I gone and done? Yep. As you can see, I've gone and got myself another telescope. So look, as you know, I've gone back to one shot color in this last, I've gone back to one shot color cameras. Um, so this came up, I wasn't particularly looking for a telescope, honest, but this came up second hand and obviously it's a little Newtonian. It's one of those Newtonians that's really made for imaging. So it's a pretty fast, it's an F4 600 millimeter Newtonian. Now, I used to have a Newtonian a couple of years back. That was a Skywatcher 150 PDS. And I always had really mixed feelings about that telescope because when I could get that thing dialed in, it could take some amazing photos. Like it, the mirror in it was really good and it punched way above its weight considering what it cost. Um, and that thing together with the coma corrector in it, like I said, if I could get that dialed in, it could produce some amazing images. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure that's the one I did the Dolphin Nebula col collaboration with Logan in New Zealand with. Anyway, the point being, the reason I ended up getting rid of that telescope is because whilst it was good when it was dialed in, it was tricky to get dialed in. And also I think because I was new to the hobby then, um, you tend to not have that much patience. You just want to get out and get imaging as well. So between like kind of the, the fact that it seemed to go out of collimation quite easily and you know, I was just wanting to get imaging, I decided to sell that telescope. But now, you know, a few years on now, four or five years on in astrophotography and back to one shot color, you know, I've done the whole thing of trying out mono, trying out different cameras. And I've decided for me personally, one shot color is where I'm at. So I've recently got a Tupatek APS-C camera. My other camera is the 533 camera. And this came up second hand, right? So I didn't buy it new, came up second hand, really good price something like about half what these cost retail. Now I haven't seen this particular telescope, the GSO. So this is the GSO, um, 150 millimeter, 600 mil um, focal length, carbon tube, okay. The only other thing that I've seen that's close to this is the Apertura Carbon Star, and they do look very similar. So maybe you guys can tell me, I've, I've seen a few things on the internet, but I wonder if this is basically the same telescope albeit a few little aesthetic differences as that um, Apertura Carbon Star. It certainly looks very similar. So look, I'll be looking to get, you know, a camera on this and um, obviously, you know, F4, it's a bit of a light bucket and it's pretty fast. So hopefully I can get some good images. I don't know how this is gonna go. I haven't had any experience with this particular telescope yet. So we'll see. The guy that I purchased, purchased this off had made a couple of little upgrades to it. So he'd, he'd made a little sort of um, mask here for the back, which I think is supposed to stop some of the light and then put a fan on it. I've changed the fan out because it was a bit loud, the fan that they had on. So I've just changed it for this fan. We'll see how that goes. He'd also put a mirror mask on the back on the primary mirror. So that's good. I've collimated it roughly just with my cheap laser collimator. We'll see how that goes. I'll probably need to and dial that in a bit more. I have got an, a homemade little um, dew shield that I might put on the front. We'll see how we go with dew. The focuser looks pretty good on this one. And again, the reason I was drawn to this over the 150 PDS that I used to have, or even the new Quattro series from Skywatcher is obviously carbon tube. So, you know, not subject to so much th thermal change as a, as a metal tube. Also this nice GSO linear bearing focuser, which again, I've not tested, but it's supposed to be pretty good. So we'll see, like it's supposed to be, um, it's not just a basic Crayford, it's one of these linear ball bearing uh, focuses. So they're supposed to be pretty decent. So we'll see how that goes. I'm probably gonna fit my EAF. It's supposed to be compatible with an EAF. So I'll be fitting the EAF on that eventually. Um, Good, you know, good looking, really good, well built. Looks the rings look really good on it. Um, at the front here, obviously, the other big reason I was interested in one of these is because it has this spider. It has this spider right up at the front here. So hopefully you can, hopefully you can see that. You got this big, this big nice, whoops, this big nice spider here. Um, which looks, you know, really solid, really rigid. So I'm hoping that's going to help with, you know, keeping the secondary mirror in collimation. 
um, and then it's nicely heavily baffled down the tube as well so you know all in all I decided especially with the price of this telescope I just decided look let's give her let's give a little Newtonian a go again maybe I'll be pulling my hair out again but since it seems to at least have addressed a lot of those issues and I've seen pretty good things about the Apertura Carbon Star um, and I got this like I said really affordable price and um, all I need to do now is buy a coma corrector so I'll probably end up just getting the Skywatcher Aplanatic F4 Star Arizona do a really good one well I say good it's a 0.75 reducer as well but that thing is like really um, quite expensive so I think I'll probably just go the Star Arizona one and yeah all I'm going to need to do for now is I'll probably just mount my guide scope up here. Eventually I might put an off-axis guider just because um, you know, I don't have so much weight sort of floating off of the top. Um, but what I'll probably do is have my guide scope here and then have this oriented down with the camera so it sort of evens the weight out. But look, <laughs> yeah, um, I've only just got this, I've only had it a couple of days. I am going to get the coma corrector sorted out for it. and. Um, Look, we'll see how we go. If you guys out there know much about this telescope or it's one of its counterparts, if you want to give me any be any tips in your experience, let me know what you think. But um, with that, I think I've said enough um, and we will get this out under the, the night sky and we'll see how it goes. So um, clear skies, everyone. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, catch you next time.